ask anybody if you belong to a local church. Can you ask somebody and get an answer? Do you belong to a local church? You don't want to move. Okay, stay there. If you don't want to move, I will move you soon. Praise the Lord. Ask somebody, do you belong to a local church? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say, I belong to this local church. It is my family. It's my community. It's my refuge. Shout hallelujah. So shall it be. So shall it be. Praise the Lord. Let's take our seat in God's presence. Father, we have come again into your word and to your word. For your word is our life. Your word is medicine to our flesh. Your word is our peace. Spirit of God, you are the author of this word. And only you can teach us. Only you can help us. And we pray to the Lord, help us to understand the word. Help us to meditate and dwell upon the word. Let the power of the word be unleashed in us in the name of Jesus Christ. And let Christ, who is the living word, be magnified in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. The message today is get going. (laughs) Praise the Lord. What did I say the message is? Who should get going? You got the message. Shall we share the grace and go home? You are so fast. (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. Next month is going to be our enlargement campaign. Amen. It's going to be our enlargement campaign, not political campaign. Now, when we talk about enlargement campaign, what are we talking about? We are talking about your growth. We are talking about your increase. We are talking about the church of the living God growing through you and growing within you. Amen? Amen. Many of you don't understand that your growth is the growth of the local church. And that is why you play around with your growth. Amen? Amen. For instance, if God should bless you with a big contract, even if you don't remember to pay your tithe, at least you'll be flexible in your offering. True or false? Simple. Because there are people that when they calculate the tithe, fear will enter them. And say, God will understand. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 28, in Matthew 28, from verse 18, Matthew 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority, not some authority. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19, everybody. Hold on, hold on. The first two words, everybody. Again, the first two words. Again, the first two words. The question is, have you been going? Have you been going? The question is, have you been going? Jesus said, 
go therefore and 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 make make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit shout hallelujah he said, go. And we should obey what Jesus has asked us to do. When Peter and John healed the man that was lame at Get Beautiful, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees gathered them together, they said, by what power, by what name have you done this miracle? Praise the Lord. By what power, by what name have you done it? The question is that when you go, by what power or by what name do you go? If you don't know who sent you, when trouble comes, you will run. Amen? Amen. If you don't know who sent you, when persecution comes, you will abandon everything. Have you not seen policemen remove their uniform? When there is riot, they will wear their singlet, they don't care. Their life is more important. They will put their <laughs> they will put their uniform in a nylon black bag. If they can carry, they will carry. If not, they will dig ground and put it there and forget for now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why trouble has come? Trouble has come. But for us, but for us, when trouble comes, we remember who sent us. That all power belongs to him. So he said, go therefore and make disciples. Go therefore and achieve a result. Go therefore, do something in my name. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus talking to his disciples again. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. When Jesus, verse 1, Luke chapter 9, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them what? Power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And they went to their homes and had a party. Oh. You see, those of you that don't have Bible just watching me, you will believe that's what's in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And they went to their church and sat down. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Those that without Bible have said hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> And he sent them out. And he sent them out. To do what? To preach. To proclaim. So we are all preachers. Amen? So we are all what? Preachers. We are all proclaimers. Kingdom proclaimers. Amen? Amen? He sent them out. Why? He had given them power and authority to cast out demons. But it only works when you go out. That power is activated when you are on the move. That power works when you engage yourself in the work of ministry. Many don't understand it. They say, Lord, give me power. Power is there. But the provision of that power is that when you move, it will activate. Did you hear what I said? So for you to know the power of the Holy Ghost is for you to get going. As a young believer, many, many years ago, I tried to pray in tongues. I did everything. I followed all rules to pray in tongues. It didn't work. Pastors prayed for me, lay hands, did everything. I didn't pray in tongues. 
And I began to wonder, what is this thing about praying in tongues even? Why is it not working? And then I just said, well, Lord, it's your gift. I can't force it on myself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then one day, one day, somebody, a friend, I was ministering to him. That was in Lome, when we were living in Togo, in Lome. And as I ministered and persuaded him to believe, to believe the word, and I was really, really passionate in my persuasion of him to believe the word of God, to, to accept. He, he was religious, but he was not converted. And unfortunately, there are churches that keep religious people comfortable. And as I persuaded him, he asked me, he said, why are you taking this thing so serious? I said, because there's not much time. He looked at me. He said, he does not understand me. And so we finished that discourse that day. And as I was climbing the staircase to go back, he said, and then the tongue started. I was like, what is going on here? Something I fasted for, prayed for, hand laid and all that. It didn't work. And on this day of evangelism, just listening to one person, but the fire I was using in me that was, you know, you are ministering to somebody as if it's do or die affair. And it is a do or die affair. Are you hearing me? Salvation is a do or die affair. Either you are saved or you are dead. Forget. And so there is no room for compromise. You can't say give me till tomorrow because you may not wake up to tomorrow. And that's why the Bible says salvation is now. And so when Jesus sent them out, he gave them authority and that authority means that when you speak, you speak with authority. Praise the Lord. We are meant to speak with power. We are meant to speak with unction. You know, there is a certainty that is in you when you proclaim the gospel by the Spirit. When you proclaim the gospel by the Spirit. The righteous, the Bible said, are bold as a lion. We are bold people. They pray, Lord, give us the spirit of boldness. Praise the Lord. When we are going out to proclaim, we should ask for the spirit of boldness. The spirit of boldness. It doesn't matter if the man is driving a Rolls Royce. That is a pathway to hell if he's not saved. Full stop. Full stop. Jesus said to them, Go to proclaim the kingdom of God and heal the sick. And heal the sick. As we preach, we minister to people. As we save them, we minister to them. But it is your responsibility to sign into the contract. Amen. Amen. You sign into the contract. You sign into the contract. You believe the word. You believe the word. You proclaim the word. You take ownership of the word. When we, when we talked about the evangelism, mommy was leading prayer. And she said, take ownership of the work of God. Take ownership of the work of God. And I will extend it by telling you, take ownership of the word of God. You know, one of my little niece asked me, he said, Uncle, is it everything you always bring the word of God? Is it everything? Well, what else should I bring? What else should I bring? Silver and gold. Is that what Peter said? But thank God we have silver and gold. Because many of you are still quoting silver and gold, have I not? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have moved on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have moved on. The silver and gold belongs to Papa. He says in Haggai, he said, the silver and gold, they are mine. And we are the children of the landlord. 
And so we don't say anymore, silver and gold have I not. Silver and gold I have, but greater things I have. Praise the Lord. And so if we meet you, if your problem is beyond silver and gold, then we stir up ourselves on the inside. And then we offer you something that is more than silver and gold. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. The Spirit of God. One more time. Something more than gold. Hallelujah. More than gold. And the Spirit said to Philip, join this chariot. No man. No man told him. Praise the Lord. No man. And the king of Assyria said, there is a spy in my army that goes to reveal the king of Israel what we plan to do before we do it. Where is this spy? Bring him out. And the commander said, king, live long ago. King, you will live long ago. But in terms of spy, there is no spy here. But there is a prophet. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There is a prophet in Israel that even what you discuss in your bedroom with your wife, he knows. Ah! What did you say? King, live long ago. But there is a, there is a prophet in Israel what you discuss in your bedroom, he hears, he knows. He said, where is he? In Israel. Go and arrest him. Sometimes people say that somebody told pastor what they did. No, somebody does not need to tell me. The Holy Ghost knew what you did. Amen. Amen. And you are busy thinking that somebody is gossiping about you. I've been hearing that for a long time. And those are for nephews, babies, children. Amen? Amen. So you think the Holy Ghost is a gossiper? No, he is a revealer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He is a revealer. If you get to know him, your mistakes will reduce. Just a few years ago, not long ago from now, I made up my mind to relaunch a pro audio business. Pro audio is all these things that we are using here. I said, I'm going to go back to that business. I'm going to make it so big this time around. And I made up my mind to invest. I made up my mind to invest in it. Praise the Lord. And I called the director of the company, called him in Germany. And I said to him, let's start from South Africa. I said, let's go to South Africa. Let's launch this product in South Africa. Let's launch it in South Africa. And the man was so excited. He said, he said, Mr. Afa, if you want to talk about the good news in a single day, this is the best good news I've had today. For you to take our business to South Africa, to West Africa. He said, let's do it. Give me the date and we'll travel. I said, let me work on the modalities. I was going to get marketers, buy vehicles, and launch a new pro audio in Nigeria, starting from South Africa to Nigeria to Ghana, not long ago. And then, one of the night seasons as I slept, the Lord showed me that the company you want to work with, they don't have a future. Don't invest. They don't have a future. The Lord showed me, don't risk your money. You see, people without the Holy Ghost will go ahead and invest all their money. And what will happen? And I woke up, I said, Lord, thank you, I prayed. And I didn't know what was going to happen. Amen? Amen? And not long after COVID started, the same year COVID started, before the COVID will end, the company went bankrupt out of business. Completely. 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 And so when Jesus said that the Spirit is our helper, He is our guide. He guides us through the risk of life. He guides us in the way we should go. 
But people are too, too loud to hear the Holy Spirit. Some people are too noisy to hear the Holy Spirit. The best way to hear the Holy Spirit is to be quiet. Be quiet. Being quiet does not mean not talking. No. No. No, sir. No, man. Especially as we go to evangelize, learn to be quiet for a while. They were in one accord. They were in one accord. They were in one accord. Try being in one accord with yourself. Praise the Lord. Try to be in one accord with yourself. Many have not understood the principle of quietness. Quietness is not an absence of noise. There was a day I was in my room studying and meditating. I was gone in that meditation. I didn't know when they brought somebody to fix a key, a key that was bad on my door. She came, they fixed it, and they left. I had no idea that they came into the room. So later I called her and said, please, when are they going to fix this lock? He said, but we fix it. I said, when? He said, ah, you did not see us. I said, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Praise the Lord. I didn't see you. And truly, they were there, and I didn't see them. I didn't hear them. I didn't know. Praise the Lord. Many of you, you are so attracted to what they are talking about. And it's not your business. You'll be here. Your ear will be somewhere else. And then after you say, they said, you may not have heard correctly. You may not have. Look, I tried to keep my life without it, they said. Praise the Lord. My life is built on what Jesus said. Every other saying, I treat them as a lie. Why? Because I see the damage it can do. Have we finished with what God said that we are so concerned with what they said? Do you know that even when people say what is true, listen, even when people say what is true, now we call it fact. The world runs on facts, not truth. Amen? Oh, say thank you, Jesus. Should I tell you something today? <laughs> You can hear facts. A believer can hear facts. And the believer can convert it to truth. Should I show you how that works? Praise the Lord. Bright, please come here. Um, if I, come here. Two of you stand here. Praise the Lord. Now, If he came and told Bright, they were talking about him that he doesn't have money. Tell him that. That you had overheard them talking that he doesn't have money. I overheard them talking that he doesn't have money. Praise the Lord. What? Truly. Let's say truly. They did talk about it. Truly. And he's saying the truth. He's saying the fact of what he had, Right? So he has told Bright that they were talking about him, that he doesn't have money. What should Bright do? A kind of man say, who are they? Is it not? That's what a kind of man would do. Tell me those that talked about him. And he may not say, and so he decided to find a way to find out from if what they talked about and who said it so that he can know what to do. Praise the Lord. And that is where many believers come fact, facts to truth. He has been told a fact. But the truth says, let the poor say, I am rich. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what they have said, what he has said. God has said that Bright is not a poor man. 
So when now, when now Bright believes what Ife says, Isaiah said, whose report? Whose report do you believe? At the end of the day, is the report you believe that will rule over your life. Are you hearing me? It's the report. So you begin to convert facts to truth. Convert it, convert it, convert it, convert it. Praise the Lord. So what should he do? He said, I don't live my life on facts. Let them continue talking. What does that? He said, Lord, let your blessing become so manifested in me so that the mockers will be put to shame. Praise the Lord. And every day he goes on before God and prays, the Lord, the mockers must, must be put to shame. The mockers must be put to shame. I believe you are a part that says, I am a blessed man. I am a rich man. Everything they said, I put it behind me. Satan, get it behind me. Do you see the difference? What he has done, he has dealt with fact as fact. The biggest problem in the church now is that believers take fact as truth. And sell truth as fact. Are you surprised? And that's why the message is that get going. Get going on the truth. Get going on the word of Jesus. Get going on the reality. Get going on divine viewpoint. Get going on the truth. So it is not what they say that is the problem. It's what he believes that is the problem. Because at the end of the day, God does not deal with him according to what they say. God deals with bright according to what bright believes. Full stop. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man believeth in his heart, so he shall live it. And in this month of evangelism and enlargement that we are going you say to yourself, this is the avenue, opportunity I've been seeking for, for God to transform me. So I am going to win so many souls that even if there be no other reason, God will use that reason and bless me. God will say, that I am ready if you are ready. And so in the month of October, there are people that will win one soul, two souls, three souls, four souls. There are people that will bet their destiny on it that if they can win 25 souls in that month, they know that their level will change. And they take ownership of it. They personalize it. There's no need for say, let's go for evangelism. No! They're not thinking about let's go. They are thinking about, I am going. I am going. I am going. And some people say, why are you personalizing? He said, my life depends on it. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, until you activate an action from the scriptures, your level will not change. God bless you. Clap for them. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Until you do what? Activate an action from the scriptures. Until you act on something you found from the word of God that will expand the kingdom, your level will not change. Prayer. We should pray. Everybody pray. Fasting. We should fast. Many people will fast. People with the greatest fasting don't have the greatest result. Because we can fast in ignorance. Some people have died in fasting. Praise the Lord. When Jesus called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It requires action. He sent them and they acted and they went. And then Luke chapter 10, we read again, Jesus, in the business of sending people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them and sent them two by two <laughs> ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Verse 2. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Verse 3. Everybody, go! 
No, no, no. Let's read the first word there. Everybody. Go. Everybody. Go. Everybody. Go. Everybody. Go. Everybody. Go. What is our response? What is our response? I will. I will. Go. I, will. Go. I am. Going. I am. Going. I am. Going. I am. Going. Why are you going? Because the Lord said, go. He said, go. He said, go. He said, go. what are you doing? Going. What are you doing? Going. When are you going? Now. When are you going? Now. When are you going? Now. Faith is, now. when are you going? Now. Faith is, now. simple. You can't go like that and not come back with souls. Do you know the joy of seeing people that you want to Christ in church? Many of you don't know it because you have not tried it. All this talk, I am anointed. If I preach here, if I sing now, if I watch, those things, those things, anybody can do it. Praise the Lord. The greatest superstars are not, are not Christians now. Those that sing, they sing so well. Praise the Lord. Yes, they are, some of, they are not Christians. But those that sing in the spirit, they are more than superstars. When the world sings, people just clap for them and sometimes even cry. <clears throat> Amen. But when we worship in spirit and truth, people fall under the anointing. People get healed. People get saved. People get delivered. All manner of things happen when an anointed, anointed person sings. It doesn't happen in the world. They can fill the stadium, but they cannot fill one life. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. They can fill any event hall, but they can't fill one soul. They can feel one soul. We are called to touch lives. We are called to make impact. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, he sent out the 72. Go, I am sending you. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Go, I'm sending you. The Bible said, when the 72 came back, they were excited. And they said to Jesus, even the demons were subject to us. They were in submission. Demons were in submission to us. What a power. What a power. What a power. Go, I am going. Proclaim, I'm proclaiming. Praise the Lord. Let your life be powered with the word of God. Hagar was on the run in Genesis chapter 16. And the angel of the Lord said, Hagar, where are you going to? He said, I'm on the run from my madam. And the word said, go back and submit. Many of you are on the run. And the word said to you, go back and submit. A life that is not given to under the authority of God's word or authority of God's church is always wobbling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Benny Hinn shared something. He said about a great man of God he used to know. A great man of God. And somehow this great man of God got into some kind of error, some things, some things. Great man of God in the U.S., he said, as so he said, this man of God used to glow. He used to shine. He said, but when he met this man of God again, he said, all the sparkle was gone. All the glow was gone. He said, he was just nothing but a mere man. He said, all the glow, all the sparkle, they were gone. You know why? We sparkle by the Spirit. We glow by the Spirit. When we do the work of God, we shine every day. 
When we proclaim the word of God, we shine every day. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The word brings shining into your life. It has nothing to do with money in your pocket, my brothers and sisters. Before uh, Otto and Zeribe passed on, I think the man is dead now. Right? I think he's dead. The last picture of him I saw, oh, I said money is wicked. Money is wicked. You won't believe that's Otto and Zeribe. Ah! He was reduced to nothing. God's people stay strong to the end. Praise the Lord. We stay strong to the end. Get your devotion now. I think Deaconess didn't read this today. I think she didn't read it. Right? She was in a hurry. Psalm 92. I want to read this for you. It is too sweet not to be read. Amen. Amen. It is too... He said the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the course of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. (laughs) Shout hallelujah somebody. In fact, that's what I love most. Fresh and what? Green. Not withered. Not withered. And this is the word of the Lord. You can go to bank with this. You can go to bank to this with this. It is the word of Jehovah. Christians don't get old. We just get matured. And more matured. And more wiser. And more wiser. And we speak more wisdom. And we are full of grace. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that when Jacob was about to die, he knew his time was come. We don't die suddenly. We know the appointed time when we are there. Paul said to Timothy, he said, my time is up. I'm about to be poured out. My, he said, I'm about to depart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then Jacob said, gather the sons of Jacob. Gather them. Gather the sons of Jacob. A good man lives an inheritance. For his children's children. As, as he gathered the children, he was not sharing land with them. What was he doing? Heritage of faith. Heritage of faith. Heritage of faith. Heritage of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our generation is more after what, what, what is Papa giving me? What is he giving me? Me, I want that house in Abuja. If anybody touch it. Praise the Lord. You can go for the house in Abuja, but somebody can go for the country called Nigeria. He said, Papa, bless me to be a ruler over this nation. And the father will say, you will rule over the nations. You will rule over the nations. You will rule over your brothers. And then he will give others houses. And the one he said you will rule will become a ruler. And so all that he gave to others, they will become his subjects. (laughs) <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at Joseph in Egypt. All the brothers became his subjects. Why? A heritage of faith. A heritage of faith. Look at Timothy. We hear so much about Timothy. We read about Timothy. Apart from the grandmother and the mother and all that, we don't hear much about any of the relatives. Amen? Is that not true? We don't hear. Have you thought about it that the one that works with God is always heard? The rest, barely mentioned. Barely mentioned. You are talking about biological, biological, biological. Who cares about biology? Amen. Biological, biological, biological. Let's go spiritual. Say be spiritual. Your spiritual father can take you to where your biological parents cannot even try to come half of it. And so spiritual fathers have power. 
They carry unction. They carry unction. When David brought down Goliath, Saul said, Abner, whose son is this? Whose son is this? Did he not know he was the son of Jesse? He was talking about something higher. He knew that Jesse could not produce a warrior. Praise the Lord. He knew that Jesse cannot produce a warrior. And so he was saying, David must belong to another tribe. I want to know whose father it is. He didn't know that the lion of the tribe of Judah, his name, his name, is a great man of war. He has come upon David. He has taken hold of the heart of David. And so David can bring 20 Goliaths down. Praise the Lord. And that is what grace is able to do. Grace empowers you to bring down Goliath. Obstacles becomes like crumbs before you. Come on. Let's sign into the project of the Lord and become big with the Lord. And become big with the Lord. Praise the Lord. If it is difficult for you to make it in Nigeria, God will send you help from anywhere in the world. It was difficult for Joseph to make it among his family member. So God had to transport him out. It was difficult for David to make it among his family. And God had to transport him out. It was difficult for Abraham to make it in the country of all. And God had to transport him out. Leave that to God to move you to another nation if it's necessary. Praise the Lord. Leave it with God. Don't move like Nigerians. Move like a Christian. Praise the Lord. Omega Fire Ministry, Apostle Suleiman. He's in Auchi. Amen. How many of you know where Auchi is? Few. Few. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody here that does not know Apostle Suleiman? No, anybody here? You don't know him? You've not heard about him? So where you come from does not matter. Where you are is what matters. Where you are in Christ. Where you are in Christ. The same Apostle Solomon, he called us many years ago to come and do his sound equipment in his church. In Aochi, I sent my team. I sent my team to that place in Aochi. I've never been there. And we went there. We looked at the whole place. We told him that it would cost close to 40 million naira to do the sound in his church. <laughs> they screamed. I said, from where will you want to see that kind of money? I said, from where? From where? 40 million. They said they don't have such money. And perhaps they didn't have it, or maybe it wasn't their priority. But whichever way, they didn't have that kind of money. The same Omega Fire Ministry, their headquarters, Apostle Suleiman. Praise the Lord. They didn't have the money, 40 million. And here, the same Apostle Suleiman, as he grows in grace and in the Lord Jesus Christ, he holds crusade now that maybe half a million dollars, and he doesn't beg money for it. Say, God is good. God is good. He holds crusade half a million dollars, or even one million dollars, doesn't beg anybody money for it. There is an appointed time for you. Amen. Be patient. The Bible says you have need of patience. Young people, be patient. Be under authority. I told them in the morning, the message on Sunday, we have caught a version that's just the message. Listen to that message morning and night. Morning and night. Apply yourself to the message. Let me tell you, do it before December. You will see what will happen in your life. The universe is governed by word. Words of government. Or words of president. Words of governors. Praise the Lord. If the governor of Lagos said they should block this road tomorrow, nobody will walk, drive through it. Two of us. 
He didn't need to come here. It's a word. It's a word that he uttered from wherever his office is. The world is governed by words. Your word is governed by word. But you are too careless with your word. Praise the Lord. You can make up your mind that no sickness will enter into you. It's a word. You can set the Lord of the Spirit and say that will never be sick. Make yourself a partaker of this program. Do something. Give God the reason to bless you. I beg now, Lord, beg now, beg. Help me, help me. Beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. Seed time I have, I shall not cease. Sow a seed of souls. Sow a seed of money. Stop begging. God does not like his children to beg. Did you hear what I said? We are royal priests too. When was the last time you saw Prince Charles begging? King Charles now begging for something. He said, please, anybody that can help me buy a new car? Anybody in Britain that can help me buy a new car? Have you heard him begging? Did you hear the mother ever beg? But nations go to them. Nations go to them. Isn't it? And every level of royalty, somebody should come to you. Did you hear what I just said? Please stand on your feet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know you didn't get what I said. I know you didn't get it. But by the time some of you will swallow, you will begin to sing. <laughs> you know, hungry man. Can a hungry man does not hear well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is why when they are swallowing, you see prophecy start coming. I hey, that thing I told you I will talk about. I hey, that other one. I hey, that one. I hey, that one. Hey, that one. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I have an assignment for you. From now, go and read. Go and listen to the message of Sunday. Listen to it morning and evening. Just the one that was caught, the message itself. And apply yourself to it. If nothing changes in your life by the end of December, come and see me personally. That's a challenge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 